music is passion. Hi everybody, welcome back to the Wonder of Anime podcast. I'm your host, Lisa. I am a multimedia anime content creator and my work spans across my blog, my YouTube channel, and of course this podcast. On this show, I interview your favorite anime content creators, voice actors, and other notable figures from the anime industry. Welcome back to another week of the show. As you probably already realized, this episode is like two days late, which I'm not mad at because it's still coming out weekly. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys are experiencing this in your real life. Everyone that I talk to is feeling this. These past couple of weeks, the first week of, you know, these January, we're only halfway through the month. Uh, it's been rough, y'all. I don't know about y'all, but I've been sick. Everybody around me has been sick. Whether it's COVID, whether it's not COVID, the flu, the cold. Y'all, it's been crazy. And I am no different. I have not been immune to feeling like crap. (laughs) But I'm on the up and up. I'm on the mend. And hopefully the rest, you know, the second half of the month um, is going well, you know, we're going to be feeling better. It's funny because I have a lot of content like in drafts and planning. I have videos that I need to edit. I've recorded interviews, but just being sick, man, just takes the energy out of you. But hopefully moving forward, I will be feeling better and, you know, more energetic. I have, of course, been taking precautions, resting, you know, just doing what I can to take care of myself. But you already know how that is. <laughs> I mentioned last week that I'm going to be sharing the anime that I'm currently watching, uh, what I'm reading as we, you know, b- the before every episode, just because I'm not currently on social media. So you're not seeing my usual live tweet threads that I do on Twitter or if I share stuff on Instagram. But because I've been so like sick and then just busy with work, I haven't really watched anything. Um, I did, of course, watch the first episode of Attack on Titan and I caught up on Demon Slayer because I had been a couple episodes behind. So I'm all caught up on Demon Slayer and that's pretty much it that I said I was. I don't know if last week when I did my episode, if I had finished love stage already but I did go ahead and finish that and this week I kind of just been I got a like some of my winter orders that I got like as presents (laughs) for myself for Christmas so I was reading the manga 10 count uh the cornered mouse dreams of cheese I was rereading that and a bunch of other like boy love goodness which I will review in future blog posts but yeah that's pretty much it on what I've been watching um this weekend as I'm recording this I am tonight I'm going to go see the movie Belle which I just want y'all to know Belle is directed by Mamoru Husada who I am that's my favorite director I love him so much he is the genius behind um, the Girl Who Leapt Through Time, the Digimon movies, some of them, um, Summer War, just like all these incredible movies and I love him and I'm obsessed with him so I'm so excited to see that on the big screen. I actually, um, they did some screenings at Anime NYC but I wasn't able to attend that. Um, the screenings so I'm so excited to watch it in theaters this evening and then I'm gonna be catching up on some of the winter anime that premiered last weekend I know my dress up darling Sasaki and Miyano love of kill all their second episodes should be premiering today or tomorrow so I will be catching up on that um, this weekend but without further ado, let's get into this week's episode. This week, I'm joined by the incredible Panda. If you're active on anime Twitter, chances are you're already familiar with her. She is a host on the Worst Gen podcast. She's the moderator of Anime After Dark Clubhouse, and she's one of the creators of the Watchers 
anime 100 challenge that a lot of us took part in last year so in this episode i've been wanting to get her on for forever because she's just so awesome um, but as you know the podcast took a hiatus blah 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 finally we got it together we recorded this episode in december and we had a lot of fun we discussed her anime journey we talked about her joining the worst gen podcast how that came around you know the origin stories her creating the watchers 100 challenge alongside scuba steve of mind of a blurred and tell from mic check mic check waifu so y'all It was so much fun. Me and her get into, of course, so many other side combos about Twitter, making friends online. Um, I told her she's a villain on the timeline, but I love it. (laughs) We just had so much fun. And this is an episode that I'm pretty sure y'all just going to be laughing the whole time because Panda is hilarious. And one thing I love about her is she's somebody who brings the same energy on Twitter, on Clubhouse, on this podcast. Like... There's some people that are so consistent with themselves in every single thing that they do, and Panda is definitely, definitely one of those people. I'm so honored that she came on the podcast. It was way overdue, and I hope that you guys enjoy this episode. If you're listening, of course, be sure to share on social media using the hashtag TWOAPod, which is the Wonder of Anime podcast. That just lets you, that just lets me know that you're listening. And you can also use the hashtag POIDN, podin. That's a podcast for people of color to let other people of color know that they're listening to a podcast hosted by a person of color. Look at that. (laughs) But thank you guys so much as always for tuning in and I hope you guys enjoy this episode. I would like you, if you can introduce yourself to the audience and who you are, what you do and what you consider under your umbrella of being you. Okay. Wow. Uh, yeah. Ooh, there's a lot to talk about. I said that <laughs> magically. Okay. <laughs> tell us about yourself. So what's up, y'all? It's your girl Panda the Don, better known as the OG Panda, better known as Pitbull Panda, better known as Bang Bang Panda with the hammer. I don't feel like banging on my table because it might not pick up. And there's just a lot. <laughs> I'm trying to work on the kinks. Better known as the Haiku Ambassador. I am part of Worst Generation Podcast. I'm also one of the made my <laughs> the moderators <laughs> for Anime After Dark and um the creator of Give Panda the Ox and one third of the Watchers for the Watchers 100 Anime Challenge. And I'm also a counselor during the daytime. I also moonlight as that. So, you know, that's my job. Like Listen, that. you do it all, um, which I love because, you know, shout out to mental health. Um, and we'll get to that. But I, you know, now that I remember, you said the watchers. Also, I feel like my memory is just amazed because everything's being unlocked. I remember last year, that's when I officially followed you because um, Polo and Tell were sharing like the Watcher 100 list. Um, and it was like, oh, follow like everybody who's involved. And I wanted to get you all three on. Um, and then that never happened because I just be forgetting stuff. And then I make a wish list of things I want to do and never do them. Um, but then that's how I remember now everything is coming into play. Um, and I love all the um, AKAs. I wish I had an AKA that I'm just not there <laughs> with that. But um I want to definitely start on the watchers list because that to me, I tried, I made a spreadsheet. I was like, oh, I'm dedicated. Has not, um, I think manga wise, because I remember like manga counted. So I definitely think I, if I add up my manga stuff, I might. But anyways, how did that challenge get started? Because I remember, and I mean, you guys still went hard. Um, and I, I know other people like kind of were have done it I'm curious to see now that the year's about to be over like who like everybody who really did it um but how did that concept get started so um I like to I like to credit like Steve and Tell but like they tell me like this is something that you created so I when I I started because I watched anime when I was younger and then like I like didn't watch as much anime more so I just read a lot of manga but I got back into watching anime because of the pot and so I started watching more stuff that I would never might like, usually be interested in so like hi so in real life I'm not a sports fan don't really care for sports went to the University of Alabama still is not interested in sports because you know that's roll tide and stuff like that but then I started watching like Haikyuu which you know is like my favorite anime like it took the place of Naruto and Naruto has been my favorite anime for like years 
And so it took the place of my favorite. And like, that's how I got more into watching other sports anime like Kuroko's Basketball, Megalobox, um, uh, Sarune, All Loud, all these different sports anime. And even my own mom said, like, it's interesting how you don't like sports, but you love sports series and sports anime and stuff. And my mom is not into anime at all. She just supports me because I like it. But, and that's how I was just like, you know, it's interesting to see like stuff that you may not be interested in in reality. If it's an anime form, it can make you more interested in it specifically in anime form. So I really created this challenge so people can kind of branch out of you know shonen or whatever they're used to watching and enjoy more series and open up their world a little bit more to the things that anime has to offer because you know I didn't realize there's a lot of things that I enjoy in other series like I'm not a big romance person but like I've gotten more into like romance like Hori Mi is like a favorite of mine right now and I'm more willing to like watch other things that I've normally wouldn't watch like like what couple of years ago like maybe 20 21 year old Amanda would probably wouldn't watch a lot of the things she watches now but you know taste change and stuff like that so that's why I created the challenge and I just wanted people to enjoy the same thing that I've enjoyed with branching out of my usual anime I love that and I it's so funny because I too I'm like not a sports person my friends are like all into footballs. I'm from Pennsylvania. So, you know, go feel, go Eagles or whatever. Um, and they always have this joke with me because I'd be like, when they're talking about the game, I'd be like, go sports, <laughs> go sports. Because I just, I'm never like, I'll go to, a, I'll go to games for like, you know, to get a cute outfit and some picks, but I'm not, I'm not playing <laughs> with anything. So I felt similarly, I recently fell into the sports. Um, I, I, I saw this. I'm mad I didn't go to this panel, but somebody na- coined what I've been feeling, which is the um, the Yaoi to, to Otaku, no, the Yaoi to Sports to Pipeline. And I was like, that's my whole life because that's, I started with um, Yuri on Ice. And then I was like, oh, well, let me check out. The, although I didn't, I know people have like Boy Love Ships and Haikyuu. I definitely don't. And I didn't watch it for that reason. But then I was like, I've watched that, Run With The Wind, and I have some others on my list, and I'm like, who am I? But it, it is very interesting, um, and I love that that's what you created the challenge in mind with, because a lot of people don't branch out, and then it gets to kind of like that toxic part where I feel like with anything in life, like if you're only exposed to one thing, then you come on Twitter with these hot takes, and it's like, rel- watch some slice of life, sir, calm down. <laughs> um, okay. and, it is just like it's so good and I I'm still working I I saw like half the season one of Haikyuu and then I got obsessed and I got all this Haikyuu stuff made all this sweat like and I'm like I still need to finish season one but it's just so Haikyuu is so happy like it just I felt like a pocket of sunshine when I watch it that like literally I'm just like this is the cutest happiest ever but then sometimes I'll be wanting to be sad. So I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't be happy. Like I, my Ooh, mind wants they me to coming. be They coming. They coming. So I'm like, <laughs> with that. But that is awesome. And did you, you met your 100, right? For the year? I, d- I did. Probably, when did you meet that? I can't remember when I met with my 100. Uh, Cause like I have, so there's some uh, anime, well, not anime, manga that I've read caught up to. I can't remember because I have like a thread on Twitter that keeps mm-hmm. track of all of the ones that I've read so far and will what read or watch. It depends because I included it. And this doesn't even include my uh, anime, the, the webcomics that I've read because webcomics do count too. I want to say I met one, my 100 on, in September because I finished Blue Lock. So which was like, I was happy to have it as my 100 series. So uh, it was in September 22nd. So Look at that. Uh, I see, I need a, I'm on your Twitter now. I need to put my list together. Cause maybe with, with what I've been reading, cause I, I, I go through phases too, where I like watch a lot and then I'm like reading a lot. Mm-hmm. And now I'm kind of managing both. Like, I don't know who I am. I've been brand new um, in these spaces doing, <laughs> reading and watching a lot of anime. Um, based on the one, like the 100 things that you've consumed, what, if you can think of a series from that, what was your favorite one that you watched? Like in context of the 100 list. Oh, um, whew, that's a hard one. Let me see. Cause I know the first one that comes to mind is probably, um, Inuyashiki. 
and I really enjoyed that one I don't think it gets like I mean maybe because I'm late and it came down I want to say in like 2016 2017 I can't remember but it's a really good series and I don't think it gets talked about enough on the timeline and I don't think hero the villain the antagonist doesn't get enough credit as a a really good uh, villain or antagonist in the series I would also say maybe out so I think like I mentioned this on like other podcasts and like I think anime after dark well I know anime after dark too is that I love like gangster delinquent mangas like even before Tokyo Revengers I love worse and um (laughs) worse than crows and I think I read a little bit of heat before I dropped it but out is like that bare knuckle boxing motherfuckers fighting in the street beating each other ass like type stuff because I'm slightly violent occasionally (laughs) (laughs) but I enjoyed out and I want to say because I'm looking at my list right now I'm trying to see I also enjoy it like uh I've been re-watching some Hayao Miyazaki films by in studio Ghibli films and stuff so another one I really like and like as far as those types of movies Spirited Away is at my top of the list but actually Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind kind of is up there with Spirited Away because I didn't realize I thought I was en- going to enjoy Princess Mononoke more but no Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind is wonderful and Nausicaa is such a great female protagonist so those are like my top three right now and Blue Lock is up there too like I'm, I love Blue Lock like it's just just introduce you into the world of fo- football and just kind of I don't know I just like the characters I like the way they go about the abilities of playing football and stuff like that so um, those are the ones I can think of off top right now is that the one that is getting no, an anime? Wait, think, yes mm-hmm. it's getting an okay. anime because when blue period came out my friend kept thinking of blue lock and I was like I don't think it's the same thing definitely not the same thing <laughs> all this blue and shit yeah, it, it's so funny because I when people talk I always like pull up what they're talking about because I'm very not really good with names but like if I see something so I pulled up um Inu Yashiki and there's an ad for blue period on it but I've also just been watching blue period so the system <laughs> the algorithms know um mm-hmm. and it's so funny because I saw somebody on my timeline today talking about that they were watching this um so it all comes full circle I love that uh the the range in your list because it I, I think that's the one good thing about anime too um something that you mentioned before is like branching like there's things that you like in anime that you necessarily may not like in other mediums and I'm that's how I felt like when Jujutsu Kaisen was coming out I was like I hate scary stuff like I'm a bitch I'm a punk ass bitch like with scary shit don't don't come for me so I was like I'm not gonna like like this and then I ended up falling in love with it I it doesn't scare me at all and then it made me reflect that I really like a lot of like anime that has like spiritual curses aspect like inspector xxxholic like I'm like oh never mind I'm the I'm different I've been like this but I just never thought of it because I don't like scary shit but when it's anime it hits different um and I think you're more intrigued than scared uh do you think for next year with the watchers list are you guys keeping it at 100 times 200 what's the numbers looking like I don't know because I thought about maybe taking a break like next year because as much as I would kind of like to do it every year I don't I feel like it'll lose its luster a little bit so Mm -hmm. I think maybe either the year after next or 2024 maybe is the next challenge but I thought about increasing it to 200 um I don't know it's just like now I know because like it's, this is kind of like a no pressure challenge so if you reach 100 cool if you don't reach 100 that's fine too as long as you enjoy the journey of watching a lot of anime and stuff that, especially ones that you really didn't think that you would like but you end up liking anyway um so I think maybe increasing it or maybe just making it like kind of a is it biannual I think biannual or every two years whichever I think biannual uh type of deal and keeping it at 100 it's just something to think about it's something I really want to have like a spaces or a clubhouse or something with tail in the sea so we can just talk about it since we're reaching the end of the year um but that's that's to be determined we'll see how that goes yeah I like that that's like a no pressure thing too because I feel like another um and I've said this on a couple different episodes it's like when we were younger like if you start anime when you were younger like 
at first you would watch whatever you could get your hands on you're like this is like anime that you and now like when you get older like you explore different genres and things like that but I feel like a lot of people now do I I wouldn't say it's because of the pandemic but obviously we saw a rise of it where like all these new people are getting into anime so you get I feel like there's this distinct line where you you jump in and you watch like Naruto Demon Slayer One Piece da, 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 and then you're like six months later you're like hey so look at this 12 12 banger about <laughs> this this anime slice of life that came out in 2008 about a man and a cat and now this is my jam <laughs> like that no pressure aspect of it has you discovering um little cute gems because that's how I felt like with Run with the Wind like I'm like I just love you so Run with much. the Wind is amazing too like that opening by Unison Square Garden the characters it's just it just it was an enjoyable watch like I loved it I, I really enjoyed it I too look I um I'm sport I was like should I because I used to run I say that like let me clarify like I was not out like I did like 5k's at the worst time but I like running <laughs> and I was like I haven't ran in so long and I'm like do I need to run again and I'm like well Haji is not gonna come on a bicycle and like admire me so no this is not this is not <laughs> happening and then I just went through like this obsession because so I'll be honest like I knew about like uh run with the wind because I like wrote an article like a listicle and it was included and then the real reason and this is bad but the real reason that I saw it was because somebody posted a clip and they were like is this boys love? And then people were arguing, like, I definitely think it has hints of boys love. And I'm like, well, I'll be the judge of that. So then that's what, and I do, like, I am of the mindset that towards the end, like, it was definitely confirmed in my mind um, that there was there. I stand by that. You, y'all can go watch my video where I do a full deep dive analysis on the reasons why I believe it was there. But it, I just like, and then I'm like telling people, I'm like, run with the wind. And they're like, what? I'm like, go watch it right now. <laughs> I was at my job sobbing, like it was too much. Uh, but I wanted to get into also the podcast because you mentioned in the beginning, you getting involved with the podcast. So how has that been like joining the, uh, you know, how you met up with everybody, how you ended up becoming a member of Worst Gen and what's that experience like? Well, it all started in 2019. So <laughs> <laughs> there's just a group chat um, for uh, people who are into anime that are in Greek sororities and fraternities. So I'm a Zeta member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. And so that's how I got added to that group chat. So there's this guy in there who is like part of my villain origin story. And he stated that the tuning exams from Naruto were filler. So I, I don't think he really understood what the word meant because people don't word so well, but you know, I digress. So I, me and this other guy are arguing him, with him down. I'm bringing out receipts. I'm telling him like my, my dude, like that's in the manga. That's not what filler is. And so I guess like sensei, and this is what sensei told me. Um, that's how they took notice of me. Sensei like text the GB, like yo, check the group chat. There's this girl going at do hair, blah, blah, blah. And so GB got in a group chat, read everything that's happened. He DM me. Because at that point in time, he was looking for like um, a, a woman, a female voice for the pod. And he asked me, like, are you interested in being on podcast? So I had seen them like posted the link and stuff in the group chat, but I'm not, was never really into podcasts like that. Um, still kind of am not because I just, I've just never been a pod podcast type of person as far as listening wise, but I'll listen to a couple of episodes to support, you know, other podcasters and stuff, including my own. So um, I said, sure. Like, I don't know how this would go. Cause I thought, you know, as to be the podcast, you got to be face to face. You got to have microphones and like, you got to have headphones and stuff. In my mind, it's like set up like a radio station. So GB said, uh, asked me where I was from. I'm originally from Mississippi and stuff. I told him where I was from and stuff like that. And he, he said like, so we're going to, he said, you can just try it out, see how it is. And if you like it, you can say if you don't, but it's no pressure. So uh this is after I want to say this was after I moved um to start my my program that I just graduated from and the first episode Congrats. thank you the first episode was focused on I think I want to say Dr. Stone and I can't remember what else I think it was I know we talked about Dr. Stone I think we talked about the newer anime that were dropping and it was me GB Sensei and Rome and I started talking, you know, getting my point across and because I was really shy. And then that was my first episode. And it's been 
down here ever since I'm just boy. <laughs> but it's it's been really fun this experience of being on a podcast and I told my mom that I'm on a podcast and stuff and like she's like pretty like really happy that I'm branching out and it's weird because we're all in different like cities and states and everything so it's it's really hard to get into it. like because we've met for the first time face to face at DreamCon. I met most of them I haven't met uh Lito Warren or Santoy I think those are all the only three. yeah those are the only three that I haven't met yet yeah but it's it's fun it's interesting it's like of course you know we all have like different personalities and different views and stuff but we still make the podcast work really well I enjoy listening to their uh, points of view whether it's on anime or whether it's just in life general like life stuff it's just like another family and being with them has helped me branch out to meet other people outside of the pod and just has made me feel like you know I feel like I, I feel I, I've had this thought the other day it makes me feel like I can I've like am just taking my first breath I don't know if that makes sense but it makes me feel just really happy and comfortable to be in a place where like you know we can all see or have differences but we all like I don't know it sounds like some kumbaya bullshit but (laughs) we gotta get along and just understand each other and respect each other's views and opinions while having fun and you know I just I really I think this is like one of the best decisions I've made I don't make a lot of good ones this is one of the best decisions I've made and I really enjoy being part of the podcast so yes I it's so funny because um I'm always of the belief that like everything happens for a reason and stuff like that and uh, during like last, last, I don't know, time, time be passing away. When me and Erica Sundari went to uh, Anime Frontier, like that's somebody that I met online and we were having like a similar conversation to everything that you said about like how our life has changed, like being in this community and like, you know, a lot of people, especially older people <clears throat> don't really understand like the community aspects of the internet because it's always like a point like beware of the internet everybody you meet is trying to scam you and then it's like it kind of actually transformed to where people do develop these like meaningful deep relationships and I think um I think I've I've, I've been just seeing stuff and then I'd be going on a rant for no reason but I was just talking about this on Twitter because somebody was like oh anime twitter is like so intimidating and i'm like you just gotta find who you're following because Mm -hmm. it's definitely one when you meet those community members um and like you find people like because i too like had been like on anime twitter and i was like everybody's just talking about dragon ball z and then i like started following different people and i'm like oh no we talk about this we talk about that like and you have this place of being like yourself with people who also are like into anime and then also have similar life values as you because I feel like that's important too like anime is like yes a uniter but if you and me coming from the same spot we both in Greek life or we both black or you know we're people of color like that also changes the relationship to what we're consuming and I feel like a lot of people don't consider that right I think I think I never gotten involved because I had like a slight village of people where I was like well people they talked about anime when I was still in high school but as far as I mean I met people you know one or two people on the way like anime too um like some of my homeboys um my best guy friends who I'm close with they like anime and like a guy who I got close with and we became friends and I met his friends and so we all became friends and stuff they like anime too but as far as having a like expanse of people who like anime like a lot of people like know me from twitter and stuff but people i haven't met yet it's like interesting but i'm kind of cautious like i was kind of cautious with gb uh dm me and i was just like i don't know this person what are we doing the podcast for what is what is this you sure you want me on the podcast but i think like like you said it's like there's that you know kind of the wariness that comes with talking to people on the internet but i think branching out and meeting these people and forming these bonds and friendships i think it was it's really fun and it kind of it kind of is worth the worth the risk and stuff like that so I mean I'm looking forward to meeting the people who are going to DreamCon next year or any people that I meet along the way um to DreamCon so yeah I think you're absolutely like right about that it's that discernment too like you definitely do have to have because I feel like and we saw this with that situation that happened a couple months ago the heavenly griffey blah 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 situation where Mm -hmm. it was in more sense where like people are like they get attached to people online and it's like oh are y'all really friends or you're not really friends like you call it everybody your friend you call it this and 
a lot of times too with any type of content creation not just like anime content creations people are like see you kind of have some clout and it's like oh like I'm interacting with you da, 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 and it's like okay but are you my friend or are we just we just sweet because me and you tweeting back and forth I wouldn't call you a friend like we just mutuals on Twitter mm-hmm. and I think a lot of the time people get burned it's because they don't have like what you said like being wary like having that personal discernment until you're able to like all right, we talking on Twitter, but can we take this offline, either like a Discord chat or, you know, we're talking in DMs or something like that. Not always having to meet in person, but I think a lot of people lack that discernment. And when you are in that content creating field, sometimes you do have to be careful because some people just want to attach to whatever hype you have, or if you have followers, or if you're you know, it looks like the the crew lit. Then people are like, I want to be a part of that too. And then shit goes south. And it's like, I don't know those people. I've never associated with them. Right. Yeah, I don't. It's just the whole like, just I think it's because of the way I was raised with my mom. Like she always told me to be independent and be careful. Like my mom, I'm the only child. So my parents are like, everywhere I go, I let them know where I'm going. Not just, not because they're, they try to control my life because they give me a lot of freedom even before I became like moved out of the house. Because my mama has always told me she wants me to experience, experience my life. You know, of course, she has a fear of a parent that all parents, like, well, most parents, at least all parents should have. But she wanted me to live my life and have fun and stuff and enjoy myself. But I keep her in the loop of where I go and who I'm interacting with. Like with DreamCon, I told her I'm going to meet my podcast by group and stuff. And of course, I'm pretty sure she was just like, nervous because she knows I hadn't met them before then. But she let you know, she was okay with me going. I kept in touch with her and stuff. So it's it's just you know being careful making sure you're not because you know you see some people like this is not anime related with people jumping on flights to meet people that they talk to on the phone but they never met in real life in other countries and stuff but I don't get because if I told my mom that I was doing that she'd kill me so hmm, I don't know but yeah she 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 definitely say she wouldn't kill me but she would at least say I, I know I raised you better than this so Yes, the people that be like going on TikTok and they're like, join me as I fly cross country to meet this person that I've talked to twice. On, and you're like, wait a, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, no, we having a field day with the, in the present day and time. Okay. You would have to do that like in secret, survive and then tell people afterwards because there's no way knowing that information. Like mm-hmm. if I, and I, I feel too like I always think like meet somebody at a public space like you know let's set up this meeting because even too like when I think I met one of my um my friends Naja like we I had her last year on the podcast and then we would talk on the phone we would text so then when we finally met up we met up at blurred con and it's all right like I met you in person same thing with Erica like after I had her on the podcast we would like text and stuff and then when we met up we finally met up like our first meetup we didn't like have our usual hangout like we just like met at the con and then we stayed together all day and it was like all right cool like you a real person you're mm. not gonna set me up for nothing like because the people be out here too like as much as you think you know people on social media but again it's like that discernment and I think too I love what you mentioned about being independent because I feel like whether it's a friendship or a relationship like you have to have a strong sense of yourself because people and I know this from like back when I was a sexual assault, domestic violence crisis person, um, people prey on people that don't have confidence. They, they seek out people that don't have friends that are lonely mm-hmm. specifically because they know those are the people that are easier to target and manipulate. Cause they don't got nobody or they're always like, they feel down on themselves. So if you have that son- sense, like that strong sense of independence, it's harder for people to fuck with you because you're not easily manipulated and somebody gassing you up, you'll be like, I know this. What are you talking about? Like, right. <laughs> you got to tell me, I know. And people, the unfortunate reality is that unfortunately bad people are out there and <laughs> you can't uh, be out here uh, doing the most. It's always, again, discernment. But um, mentioning DreamCon, you're going to DreamCon next year. Yeah. I'm, if I, I apply for press. So if I get it as press, I will go. If not, I do not go. But fingers crossed, uh, because that would be cool to me. It's so funny because this year when DreamCon happened, I had, I only knew as it was happening. And everybody's like, you go to DreamCon? I was like, I don't even know what DreamCon is. 
<laughs> it like blew up this year. But how was your experience at DreamCon this year? And have you gone to any other con since? Um, my dream experience, I, but the biggest thing I was looking forward to, no offense to, you know, DreamCon itself and RDC World, I was looking forward to mostly just meeting everybody. Um, I was excited to meet, of course, my podcast co-host, as well as um, Bland and May, well, Bland and <laughs> that's what they call themselves now, it's, 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 a, it's kind of a joke for Bionomy After Dark, but like other podcasters and stuff, um, I met like Steve from inside the I met Steve from inside the Mount of Blur I don't know if I met anyone else of course I met God Team God Punch and stuff like that so I was mostly looking forward to just interacting with people who I met on Twitter and stuff like that and the the con was fun my only regret is that I didn't like take off more days for my internship to go and stay there like the full time because I came in Friday evening and had to leave Sunday like afternoon so I didn't get to have a full experience like I wanted to um, which is, you know, it, you know, you live and you learn. Um, and now that I know, because I was so focused on, I'm trying to graduate in the summer. I'm not trying to stay at, at like my university longer than I need to. So that was really at the forefront of my mind. But it, looking back on, I should have stayed. But I haven't been to any other cons since then, because after that, I was focused on graduating and being done with courses and finding a job. <laughs> but now that I'm in a space where I'm finally done with school and I have a job and like I had know how my you know my breaks are set up because I'm on school schedule so when the kids are out of school I'm off work so um I just you know I'm looking forward to kind of traveling just traveling a little bit more and going to different places and seeing people so that's really what I'm looking forward to so um I want to go to more cons I do want to cosplay a little bit more it's just cosplaying is expensive and I'm broke so yeah but that's I, I think I do look forward to traveling and whether it's to, for a con or just to meet up with my people. So it's either or at this point. Yes. And I, I, um, with that, with, I just started going to cons this year and I was finally in a position where I was like financially able to, and be able to do all these things. And it's like, I always think things are definitely in season and anytime schools in somebody's like, I'm like, prioritize school because school be like you look left girl your grades fucked up your whole life in shambles because of this damn degree so I always think there's always gonna be like seasons in your life where uh you know school gotta come first or there's other priorities and I think too it's a lot more fun when you don't have like the back of your mind like I gotta do this assignment or something or something like that because that be getting to people too uh, but I, I feel you with the experience of like, a, like, I think the first couple of cons that like I went to this year, I was, I was already meeting people like all these cons this year, I, I went with the intention of like meeting up with people. So I was more excited to meet up with people than for the con itself, but the, like both together were amazing. Um, but dream con just seemed like so much fun. I just cannot wait. I was like, if it's not dream con, we're going to meet up at another type of event because I feel like the vibes are just we have so much fun together in all these spaces and everybody speaks so highly of each other and it's just like the love is there I love to meet Mike and Sine. like when I had him on my podcast I felt like I just went through it and we were they lifted me up out of an emotional period of my life when I was binging AOT and they offered support because <laughs> I was going through it um you know that's necessary but mm -hmm. it's honestly the best and there'll be there's that I feel like too now with like you know COVID ain't going nowhere but with people learning more and doing more precautions the cons are just getting better like mm -hmm. they're gonna be more lit next year right. when we have the time and resources as for cosplay I feel you I bought all these wigs because I went through like this phase where I was like oh I'm a cosplay and then I like have not done anything <laughs> it'd be a lot and then you'd be like oh I'm gonna get the wig and then it's like well there's gotta be a closet closet cosplay because I don't have three hundred dollars to drop on this outfit look I have only I have only two cosplays under my belt and that was like Ed from um Cowboy Bebop which I did in dream time because I was gonna do Nanami and then I showed my mom like what Nanami looks like and then my mom was like you're gonna be in Texas in the summer are you sure you want to wear that? And then I decided to go with Ed since Ed's like outfit is a lot cooler. And then I also cosplayed as Hinata, which was my first one because you know that's 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 my that's my baby. You know that's my favorite character. So, um, yeah, I just be looking at the cosplay, the outfits and stuff. I'm just like, oh, I ain't got no money. I need a Listen. sugar daddy, a cosplay <laughs> daddy, something. 
a cosplay daddy. Now that sounds nice. <laughs> that would be nice. Um, yeah, it it definitely can get up there, but I, I have not cosplayed as a, at a con and I'm also somebody that gets hot real easily and I just don't, I don't see it for myself. Like shout out to y'all looking beautiful at the cons and the cosplays and the intricacies. I'm good. <laughs> Look, I, I, I was born and raised in the South and I still cannot stand the heat for the life of me. I keep my fan on year round, year round. <laughs> I I'm a winter baby so I love the cold and I know a lot of people they hate it but this my this my time to shine being cold is my life (laughs) um I did want to touch upon the clubhouse uh and the the spaces specifically the clubhouse because you guys have transformed the anime after dark um you know week by week trending every time numbers is growing participants all of that stuff, how has that experience or been like, or kind of what was the conversation in getting that uh, clubhouse started and then being consistent with it every week? So I remember like clubhouse itself wasn't something that's on the forefront of my mind because the way I function is like, I'm in my own world most of the time. So things that are told to me, I listen, but it doesn't really click until like maybe later on until it's like something that I have to put on my list of things to consider. So like I remember Mike and GB coming up with the idea because this was this is their really their baby, and you know I think I can't remember if they asked me or told me about it or asked me to be a moderator. Either way, like I was you know um, moderated for, like most of the time, and then I got became more consistent with it because you know I was in school and I didn't really you know think much of Clubhouse itself because I'm just like I just hear people that just be moaning in rooms and doing all this extra shit and I ain't even got time. I don't have time, but then. I've become more consistent with it, um, with being a moderator. And it was like, it was a lot of fun just listening to people's takes. We have so many funny moments from Clubhouse that will continue to make me chuckle. And one of the greatest moments when we had Zeno Robinson um, come into the Clubhouse room and stuff. And hopefully he makes a, hopefully we have more people, you know, like him and voice actors and people who are in like into like the anime industry come in to and join us and just enjoy it. But Honestly, just with, even with the episodes without him, which is all the other ones, we still had like a good, <laughs> we still had a good time and a good turnout. And you know, it's like fun to trim, but it's like people are having fun with it. People are tweeting wild stuff using the hashtag, and then you have the porn bots that come on the hashtag just for no reason. So, but it's funny. Um, <laughs> but I had, but I've been having a lot of fun with my fellow moderators and the people that come in. So you know, shout out to the people because really them us moderators could be in there and like nobody else and it wouldn't take off the way it has been doing so it's just really just the people coming to enjoy themselves and spending their Wednesday nights um with us and everything so we really I appreciate everyone that's come to support whether you just stay in a crowd or whether you come up to the stage or whether you're just you know retweeting all the hashtags and stuff like that it's you know any little support is really amazing and great yes the the clubhouse community is so lit like I've like I said I'm just not in the clubhouses because the way my anxiety is set up and I like seeing people but the times that I have gone on and not completely embarrassed myself I would never go on a clubhouse again ever again after the last time um but every time that I've got on everybody is just so awesome and like you tweet with the hashtag people start following each other and people who actually like interact with you like that's the one thing I really appreciate is the community sense around um the anime after dark it's like you start with you know seeing who's using the hashtag sometimes like I'll go on and I'll like follow even I'll be on the hashtag and I don't be listening but I just be like I'm there too in spirit (laughs) um and it's just like everybody is just so awesome and it's so respectful I feel like I too have had I also had some thoughts on, on clubhouses because when it started popping off, I heard about the moon and, and, and like some some stuff was going down that I was like, you know what, Lisa? Everything ain't for everybody. Everything ain't for everybody. And I, I so I was like hmm, hesitant about it. And then some of the anime after dark. So sometimes I will just listen and just have it playing. Uh, but then I also be working early on Thursdays and I got to drive. So I was like, I can't be staying up late because then you be getting caught up listening to some shit and the story's getting crazy. And you're like, it's 12 a.m. Because I'm an hour ahead of you guys, too. So I'm like, it's, I got to go. Right. Gotta go to, after dark really meant after dark and I should be sleeping. But the community sense is amazing. And 
I love all the moderators. You guys are so awesome. And it's just such like, I love seeing the numbers grow because it's not about the numbers, but I do think a lot of people, when you have, like I said, a negative connotation of like, oh, anime, Twitter, online, anime, whatever. And then you see spaces like this where it's completely different. It's, you know, not people arguing about uh, Dragon Ball Z 24 seven, like this. I love seeing like more people being put on and being like willing to like, go and talk about themselves or like express themselves using the hashtag and I'm like I love this for you guys I think I think it's like when we first started when we the first time we turned I'm just like oh shit this is a thing now awesome and you know I want I just want like honestly and I think I've like talked to, to GB and Mike about this and of course I think we've talked about it in Clubhouse um it's just making this a thing that's live like not just on Clubhouse like if we have like um a panel after for anime after dark where people come and we do the same thing except it's in person and you know it's I think because that'll be of course we work out the optics with that whole thing but I would like to do something like that where it's like live and people can see us and they can ask us questions and they can come quote unquote come to the stage and stuff like that so about we set up anime after dark on clubhouse the app just bring it to a wider stage that's more personable and people can see our faces and stuff instead of our all our ever-changing avatars on clubhouse and stuff like that so i would that's something that i would like to see happen maybe a dream con maybe at another con or something just especially a dream con since the majority of our anime community is going to be there hopefully if they drop these tickets and do right but you know listen you just gotta apply for the panels um shoot your panel shot because i've been seeing some of these panels and i'm like girl this could have been a tweet so definitely sometimes the bar is not that high and an anime after dark there's always a lot of those uh those panels always do well when it's like community based when it's like people not talking at you people engaging the audience like I find that a lot of people always end up talking about those panels so definitely you guys better shoot your panel shot because I will I won't be since I'll see your faces I'll be more comfortable <laughs> but it's so funny that you mentioned um ever-changing avatars because for a long time I had no idea what you looked like and I was like you you're you always use like a manga panel <laughs> in your on your twitter abby and I'm like there got to be a pick a panda here somewhere like what does she look like like what and then I think finally the one time I did like before I saw like went on a twitter like stalker and like went through your media I was like, all right what let me see and then you put a picture of yourself on clubhouse and I was like oh my god panda you're so beautiful didn't know because what was your you had this one that it was this guy that had like a headband oh that was um Oh, it's not Oga. It's like from it's from uh, the manga out, and he made this face where he said something, and then he just paused. And like I feel like I just do be doing that a lot. With, I just pause and just like, this is you serious? So like I think I felt like I was just I just felt his facial expression in my spirit, and that was like my manga pant, like my my avatar. Cause I be trying to be incognito on Twitter because I don't need my coworkers or nobody that I know personally following me because I tweet reckless sometimes. I've been doing good lately, but I tweet reckless sometimes and I just be trying not to do that. Like I don't want my, my I don't want to come to my boss's office and see and she says, "So is this you on Twitter?" No. This you, you like um excuse me. Like this is why delete, I don't use my name. Delete. I try when I post pictures it's like I, once in a while, but I try not to like show my whole like I don't I, mm -mm. yep I keep my Twitter needs to stay Twitter and my personal life needs to stay over there so listen we ain't mad at it um I I well I put like my my social media my brand on my application so my job knows them this weave um your reckless tweets are hilarious because I literally be oh my god I can't tell you the amount of moments I just be opening my Twitter, drinking my coffee, see some shit. I'm like, Panda, what the fuck is this? <laughs> so, like, I love it though. I'm here. I, and then there's stuff that I'll be wanting to like. And I'm like, let me telepathically let her know that I like this. Some of this, you know, I have a, I have a family. Like I'm a family woman. I'm going to be liking this on me, but I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. I was like, I love me when me and Erica were together. We were talking. I was like, some people do the most on Twitter. I was like, but never Panda. I was like, Panda's tweet be my life. 
because you be tweeting something about a like an anime character and I was like I too would want to be an Eiffel Tower in this scenario <laughs> I was like I too but there's some stuff that you tweet that it takes me a minute that I'll be like oh I see you we here girl we here <laughs> look I just be feeling it and I'm just like this is what I feel right now and people be like it's not even such a time yet look the faucet be on over here like 25 8 so like look I can't I can't help it I cannot help it if if the if the if if it if I let them use me a little bit and by him I mean my hormones so yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> listen I um this episode will be out before I release uh, me and you's episode I had um she goes by Wreck It Ronnie. Um, she's a cosplayer and she also does like OnlyFans stuff. Um, she also goes by like Lola, Loli, Black, Black Bunny, something. She she has two different profiles. And we were talking about that, like she because she was like, I'm a degenerate on main. And I'm like, no, I was like, we'd love it. I was like, I love this era of like embracing, like talking about these things. Cause I feel like for me for a while like I'd be reading my smut like on a private incognito browser now I have a whole bookshelf dedicated to it um and then my husband he'll grab he grabbed uh, poor soul he grabbed one of the <laughs> yaoi mangas he was like this what you'll be reading and I was like wait though <laughs> I was like wait but I love the like this is like talking of, I always say talking on smut on main after I had Kate and Nisha um from but why though on my podcast because I'm like we grown like we grown like this is part of us too like we are people who like anime and social justice and I also like smut on main like these are all parts of my personality that we don't gotta hide it no more no more incognito browsers unless the site could be giving you pop-ups then I do recommend the incognito Def definitely be on in hentai on incognito but you didn't hear me that, that for me. Listen, definitely clear your browser history after N hentai. Other than that, though. I know, it'd be an incognito, so ain't no trace. Just in case somehow my mama go on my internet. I, my mom does not check my phone or not, so I just be me being paranoid. But I'd be just... <laughs> your mom living her life away, states away. And wait, like, wait. Let me check Panda's brand. <laughs> like, she's not even, like, that's, that's the thing. Like, my parents have never, like, they kept no. blocks when I was younger, but, like, they, my mom's not going to go on my phone and see what I've been looking down on the internet. She don't. First of all, my mama knows me. My mom and I have a very close relationship, so I tell her a lot of things. But she's not, she's, she doesn't, she doesn't cross She don't need mind. to see that part. You know, there's, there's limits to what our parents, because I, I, I also, too, am one of the, um, close your tabs, because, you know, I be, I've had moments where, like, when I go to work, my wi-fi automatic i automatically connect to the work wi-fi pull up my google chrome i got six inappropriate tabs i'm like no, <laughs> yeah i did not need to know that i was reading this last night on some shit no thank you i'll be like um it, and it's so funny because my my job's wi-fi has like blocks and stuff so one time I was trying to look at these, uh, not even nothing, not safe for work. It was like thigh high socks, but the, the brand was like thicky something and it was blocked for, and it said blocked for porn. I was like, now the IT people think I'm looking at porn and I'm just looking at thigh high socks. But then because manga is all in like Japanese, like none of it gets blocked. So I'm like, yeah, no, I was like, let me get off the wi-fi close mm -hmm. these tabs and come back this word for the wise for anybody that is brave enough to read smut not you know on your phone just be careful be careful i, I definitely be reading like erotic fan fictions but i'd be on my data so i listen i literally be 2 p.m i'm at the airport scrolling away oh they get th this part <laughs> They just hooked up after the mixer. Let me zoom in real quick on these. Oh, now he's he gonna put his, his down her throat. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait, that is a game. That is a game, babe. Wait a minute. You'll be like, <laughs> listen, I love it and I'm here for it. As we're wrapping up, because I know we got anime after dark, we've run out of time. You have to go be the um villain in anime after dark just not the villain the wait a minute hold on. <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> people call me a villain i really don't be doing that. no you don't you're my, i mean even if you were a villain you're my fave i will commit violence for you you know i'd be ready with the night like 
we on the same level. We on the same level because I hate seeing uh, stuff. You like, be, I, you see me lit with the looking eyes and the knife emoji, like like when my people say such and such is bothering me on the timeline or something something happened. I'm, I just be like, huh? What, what happened? Mean? What happened? I'm the same because I literally like somebody literally could drag me on Twitter. I'd be like, all right, somebody drag somebody that I care about. I'd be like, it's on. Like I don't get involved with. Like I told GB, I was like, I don't get into like talking about stuff on the timeline because I'm very sensitive I don't like arguing about my favorite stuff like let me just enjoy it in peace but I will hold down for one of my faves online because you're not gonna come at none of us we are right we are tribe and it's also hilarious seeing all of us roast the same person in a nice way like not the people that take it too far because we be roasting and it'd be like hilarious and soft then other people really be coming with the violence what but sometimes the violence if it's warranted it's warranted but other times people just be doing the most, <laughs> but I shall let you go. So if, is there anything that we should, um, of course, I'm going to have all your social media links at the bottom of, in the description of this episode, but is there anything else maybe upcoming that you want to plug um, that people should be checking out? Uh, I can't really think of anything. Um, oh, I can't really think of anything. Um, but just support, you know, Anime After Dark, Worst Gen, Get Panda the Ox, The Watchers Challenge. I do want to say that we're like me, Steve and Taylor planning to have like some type of thing where we talk about the challenge this year. But other than that, I really appreciate you having me. When you said, oh, this episode's about you. It's like, oh, oh, okay. Yay. Yay. <laughs>